This is All India Radio. In the program spotlight now, we bring you a discussion on preparedness and impact of Cyclone Yas. The participants are Senior Scientist Rajinder Kumar Jenamani, Head of the National Cyclone Warning Center, New Delhi, and Ruchika Chitravanshi, Journalist. More than a million people in India have been evacuated as Cyclone Yas started making its landfall on the eastern coast. Cyclone Yas is the second cyclone to hit the country after the Cyclone Top Day, which has wreaked a lot of havoc and also led to a loss of life. Dr. Jenemani, can you tell us a little bit about what have you observed about the cyclone till now and how do you see it heading now? Within just the interval of two, three days, another system formed. So as you told that Taute and now the Yas. So we were just comparing. In terms of the wind, uh, number one is that the Taute was stronger because the wind was uh, 160, 175, lasting to 190 kmph. Whereas uh, the Yas in that way is a little weaker uh, because the maximum wind is 140, 50 and 165 kmph. So 30 kmph almost less. And uh, as you know, that is a logarithm scale wind. At that point, less means the damage potential of the wind definitely has been less. And the landfall, if you see the hours or duration, the recent two days it took, it was two hours, something like 8.30 to 10.30, 11, two to half hours. Whereas Taute took almost four to six hours. Uh, it remained longer period while crossing. So that way, the damage potential was higher Taute. And the third part, if you compare the rainfall, we expected the rainfall for the Odisha cyclone yes, would be higher. And that happened, if you see the Chandwali uh, yesterday has been 45 centimeter. If you add after 8.30 today, another 15 centimeter and 28, roughly 45 centimeter. So all along the Odisha coast, the rain has been 20 to 40 centimeters. Whereas Gujarat, we don't have that much rainfall. We have something like 20. So that was a little, uh, the impact of the rain was less. But no doubt the systems were formed, uh, was having a longer period and uh, impacting almost like uh, the Kerala, Karnataka, and uh, Maharashtra, Goa, and then Gujarat, Rajasthan, Delhi, and Uttarakhand, and Uttar Pradesh. So very high impact, a longer period. It was something like 13 to 22 or 23, 10 days, where the present system is only for uh, 6 days and another 2 days will be there. So that is all kind of comparison. And the YAS, uh, if you see the latest today, it is just uh, west of Balasar, some 50 kilometer mainland, weekend also. The wind also has uh, now come to the 90, 100, 110 kilometers. But rainfall impact or rainfall intensity is continuing over north interior Odisha and Valeshwar and Mednapur. And by tomorrow or tonight, it will enter to Jharkhand. So we have given Jharkhand for two days heavy rainfall and extremely heavy rainfall north Jharkhand tomorrow and then Bihar and the east of the way. So more or less the cyclone path and everything that was already predicted by IMD is this is the way it is heading. How do you see the storm subsiding? By when do you see it subsiding? Prediction part, we have been very accurate. Yes, also inside the sea, it was whatever we predicted, 150, 160, gusting to 185, it was there. As you know that when it was east of Paradip and then at Hamra, east of Hamra, so that wind speed has been there. But on the coast, whatever we have received or whatever we have estimated, it is 150, 40 and 150, gusting to 165, actually. That is the kind of accuracy. Why is this, the whole Bay of Bengal region, so dangerous? We've had Cyclone Emphan, we've had Cyclone Fani. Is there something that you can... Bay of Bengal, uh, right from 19, we have Bulbul Fani, and then 2020, we have Omphan, and now 2021, we have now the Gias. But actually, May month, Cyclone form, but as they are moving repeatedly towards Odisha or Bengal, so that way, one uniqueness has been there. But normally, forms actually. May is the peak month, they move to, uh, mostly they recur, to Myanmar and Bangladesh, but this time they are moving straight to the west, northwest, or northerly, hitting the west Bengal Bangladesh. But this is not anomaly, that is our analysis, because one system, just two or three years, is not sufficient to explain the impact of the global warming or climate change. You can discuss about Arabian Sea. That study has been coming, that Arabian Sea is becoming more cyclone prone and the intense systems are forming in Arabian Sea. Last year we have Mr. now we have also the system Taute earlier also. So that they are moving actually towards Oman and other coast, but their frequency higher, they are increasing in Arabian Sea. But Day of Bengal, we don't find any trend. 
as you said now it is going to enter jharkhand it's also likely to affect states of andhra pradesh and tamil nadu also on the east coast if i'm not wrong mr janamani no this system is actually already in the northernmost part of the country so it is over actually near that kanjar balasor area so that will move to say jamshedpur ranchi by tonight or tomorrow so that way they will affect only the northern part of the india now in the south we don't have any kind of such impact actually what is the kind of advisory that you have issued for the next you have given warning actually because it has weakened but you know the remnant is stronger that is we call in technical depression or deep depression so those normally cause also gusty wind up to 80 or 90 km per hour and that's why like banana tree and uh, papaya tree these will be vulnerable and any loose structure for jharkhand uh, it will be vulnerable and the second part is the heavy rain so there is a very high chance that uh, some kind of flooding it may cause so that area is a very you know uh, eco sensitive area jharkhand area and uh, as you know that we have also tribal area so they are also staying in the kacha house so it require more safety we are doing all possible kind of early warning so that it will minimize the impact there uh, particularly in terms of the impact particularly like cows and goats and all these so that they can be moved to safer and human life also do you think that because of the covid situation it has further aggravated the whole crisis because it is difficult to do the kind of evacuation operations and the kind of health response that this requires in the middle of a pandemic how are things being handled what is your advisory last year also you know the pandemic was there but uh, this year it has been another kind of a disaster going on but this is directly affecting the life actually you might have seen the footage today in odisha somebody is going out of a cyclone shelter and uh, is doing something and then uh, how the life is risk actually so within our covid protocol then whatever possible actually the state government and central government are doing the best and definitely i feel we are both has to be given priority but no doubt we have also come out of gujarat cyclone successfully we hope jharkhand will be able to manage particularly the state government and central forces to the ndrf can you also explain to our listeners a little bit about how you said that the even though the storm might have weakened one still has to be at a very high level of caution so what exactly is the category of the cyclone and how do you define it what is the kind of danger level that you prescribe for cyclone yas now actually this atlantic and pacific they are the regional names typhoon in the pacific and in the atlantic they also called it like katrina and other the name it is also but uh, in our country right from the you know early age we called this intense system cyclone and we have classified like category 1 we called it depression so that depends on our wind speed so if your wind speed is up to say something like 36 or 40 km up to 50 km we call it depression then uh, from 50 to 70 we call it cyclone actually that is cyclone storm that is 35 knots so roughly it is coming a 60 kmps to 80 kmps so like that then we further classify 80 to 100 severe cyclone storm and so on very severe cyclone storm up to 165 and then uh, super cyclone we go up to 180 200 and 220 kmps so that classification is there and we add up for the indian region as well and this is something like category 3 and then extreme severe cyclone storm is category 4 this is a category 3 which is somewhere in the middle of the range of cyclonic risk that you define also mr janamani you talked about orissa and how it is headed to jharkhand for orissa itself what is imd's uh, prediction now and are you still advising caution and what is the kind of caution that you are advising right from 2008 we have the new ministry ministry of earth science why whatever was there with the different ministry like oceanography and then department of science and thing so all the component of the earth science has now come together so earth ocean atmosphere and cryosphere the combination of all these the system they contribute to, to the natural process then we have developed also global model also where we have the observation right from himalaya from polar area to oceanic area we have the office in pune and hyderabad like indian ocean analysis center in hyderabad in koji and then we have also indian institute of tropical meteorology and then we have noida the national center for medium range weather forecasting so as for the world standard we have different uh, centers also they are contributing as a whole we come out with the one analysis only 
and they need to go you know covering the cyclone and then activity over the ocean in kind of uh, ocean uh, systems like tsunami and then cyclone like atmosphere and ocean and monsoon also which is a combination of ocean and atmosphere so all these you know combined and we share the product also one model and severe event or disaster whatever you call so last uh, five to 10 year you know the investment this i told about the computer model and different specific center but if you come to imd alone we have as uh, you know that now 26 radar and the radars are the main you have seen how it was contributed the trivandrum radar and then goa radar we don't have a bomb radar functional but satellite help and field it yeah. and if you come that was the case with the rbmc tauti cyclone which crossed gujarat but if you see this yaar cyclone we have a very good radar network right from chennai then we have visakhapatnam then we have gopalpur all have been functional so one satellite radar and then once it come to the coast we have like very close coastal observatory paradip and then tanvali and then baleshwar then now it is purely on the surface observation because we have a very high resolution data now so from satellite to radar and then main land so all those cover and they, as i told the computer model also covering sea area and atmosphere like pune iit i mean indian institute of tropical meteorology national center of meteorology medium in noida they are contributing so it is a combination of all the centers of this ministry but if you invest in this kind of organization they give us the result actually directly it is the minimizing the life loss and giving you know five days six days warning so that no fisher man you know in the sea so that we india has improved and so on. you know gone are the days lack of people if you see bola cyclone bangladesh super cyclone odisha it's not alone the, they were the intense but you see that time even a minimum intensity of the cyclone having thousand slight loss but that days have gone because of our uh, scientific structure and establishment now that the cyclone has made the landfall what can odisha expect now what is your prediction yeah the severe weather is over actually because now it is only giving rain only whatever damage we expect is only from rain as you know there have been very strong interaction with state government up to jharkhand and i think nowadays also each state has a disaster management covering up to block level even up to panchayat level if you go to state like andhra pradesh odisha gujarat they are so modern in the disaster they don't leave any stone actually you see in odisha chief minister and also gujarat you have seen andhra because these are highly vulnerable so i think jharkhand also has been doing each state is doing best so we hope we will be the best example in terms of the managing the disaster as you know that we have the national disaster management authority since it has been operational after that super cyclone you might have seen how prime minister and up to home minister all are reviewing the situation time to time so that way all organization are also working in harmony so that way actually it's the best time in india actually in terms of managing the cyclone we are the example in the world also if we move a little bit further from not the eye of the cyclone and part in uttar pradesh and delhi for instance when the cyclone topi happened we had one of the most heaviest rainfalls that delhi had ever received why is it that we have not seen that kind of effect for this cyclone or is there something that we have missed It was a very unusual situation and I have been working in Delhi for 20 years. Yeah, very rare. Yes, we will give the rainfall over Jharkhand, but Jharkhand gets normally rainfall from the remnant of the cyclone. But Delhi never has got such rainfall. We have seen only the highest rainfall for any region was 60 mm in 1974. But we got around 12 cm almost all part of Delhi. So that day also we have given a very high alert also. Wind was not there, but impact in terms of the rainfall was there from Taute over Delhi on 19th of May. But uh, next two days, I don't think Yas will give a, such a high impact, unusual impact. But rain will be there, no doubt. But there is a very high chance that there will be high rain for Jharkhand, Bihar and East Uttar Pradesh for next two days. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Janamini, for sharing your insights on the cyclone Yas, which has made its landfall in Orissa. Few more states to go, which are likely to receive heavy rainfall. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on preparedness and impact of Cyclone Yas. The participants were Senior Scientist Rajender Kumar Jenamani, Head of the National Cyclone Warning Center, New Delhi, and Ruchika Chitravanshi, Journalist. This program was produced and presented by the New Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.